God, it's good to be here in the house of God. Amen. 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 I'd like to welcome all the first-time visitors. If you're a first-time visitor, I just want to see your hand. I just want to see your hand. I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay, we welcome you to Truth and Love Family Ministries this morning. It's good to see Brother Gus in the house of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Brother Gus, we've been praying for you, brother. Amen. And we also want to thank the Lord for Sister Annie's healing. Amen. Nobody knows what it feels to be sick until you're sick. And nobody knows how good it feels when you get healed. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But this morning, I do want to continue with a message that I've been on. And I know that I'm not going to finish it because I haven't even gotten to the meat of the message yet. And this is, what, what number is this, Jerry? Three or four? Three. three. It's number three. Amen. But I think we'll probably go, go into number five by the time I'm done with this series. All right. It is so important, people, that each and every one that is here this morning gets to hear what the Spirit of God has to say. Look, you can kill the messenger, but you can't kill the message. Amen. 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 So I hope you guys still love me by the end of the message. <laughs> Amen. 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 But how many people believe that Jesus is coming back? Amen. 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 No, he made a promise. Listen to me. He made a promise to 500 people. 500 people heard the words of Christ. 500 people heard the words of the angel while Jesus was ascending. And he told them, men of Galilee, says, why are you gazing up into the heavens? This man, Jesus, the way he left is the same way that he's coming back. Yeah. Yeah. Now go and do. Come on, people. I hope you guys are already awake. Yeah. Now go and do as you were told and wait upon the promise. Amen. Amen. Many people aren't willing to wait. <coughs> Because of 500 people that heard those words from the angel of God, only 120 were willing to go and wait. They didn't know how long it was going to take. They didn't know what they were going to go through. But you know what I love about these people that waited and waited and waited in the upper room? That they came together as one. Yes. Yes. They were knitted together in spirit and in truth and in love and in joy, and in peace, and for 40 days, these people, there was no division, there was no strife, there was no backbiting, all they were doing was praising and praising and worshiping God, and waiting on the promise, and waiting, and waiting, and waiting, and one day, when the waiting was over, oh my God, the Holy Spirit fell upon these people, because they had a will to wait on the Spirit of God. Mm. See, because we never know when Jesus is coming back. But Jesus told us that he would come back. And he's coming back. And I thank God that God has been giving me these teachings to prepare each and every one that is listening to my voice. It's only my voice, but I know that it's God that is speaking through me. I know that. I know that. I know that. Because this is not me sometimes. Sometimes I can't even remember what I ate yesterday. <laughs> Same thing with you guys. Right. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. But I just want to tell somebody, tell somebody, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So the title of my message, so you guys will know again, hold on, because I'm a coming. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hold on, I'm a coming. He's coming back, people, and he's only coming back for his people, not the people. He's coming back for his people. Amen. People who are willing to endure and persevere to hold on to the promises of God. Amen. Because God made us a promise. Oh my God, people, if you're a believer in Christ, if Christ dwells in you, then hold on to that promise. Because one day we're going to see the Lord face to face. Amen. Doesn't matter what you go through here on earth. Doesn't matter about your sickness and your health and your God doesn't care about all that. What God cares about, are you willing to hold on? Are you willing to endure? Are you willing to persevere? Are you willing to follow through that no matter what happens in life? Because he is coming back, people. Amen. Amen. He is coming back. Jesus yes, is coming yes. back. No, Jesus is coming back. I'm gonna say it again. Jesus is coming back. Amen. 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 And I don't know about you, but I hope he comes back for me. 
Amen. Amen. I'm going to continue to hold on. Amen. Amen. Excuse me if I get a little excited this morning, but I tell you what, I've been in prayer this morning. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. And I heard from God. Amen. Praise God. And I prayed that Jezebel spirit out of this place. Woo! I prayed that wicked spirit out of this yes, place. Yes. That spirit. That, don't, don't tell me. Let me tell you where I was this morning. I was here at 630 in the morning. Amen. Praying and believing for this service. Praying and believing for this ministry. Amen. Prostrated. I'm, I'm telling you, God has been doing some things in my life lately. Amen. He's been showing up in my life again Amen. through visions and dreams again. Amen. I haven't had a dream, but I had a vision. Glory. And sometimes visions are better than dreams. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because visions will come to pass yeah. and a dream is just a dream. Amen. Amen. So don't let that little sandman come and sprinkle some sand. <laughs> Amen. But I thank God. I thank God. I thank God for what he's doing. Amen. Because I want everybody in here to remain prepared, to remain ready. Because from one day to the next, we don't know what's going to happen to us. We don't know the trials and the tribulations that the enemy would love to throw at you. But we have to hold on because he is coming back, people. Amen. The Lord is coming back for his people. Amen. 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 But I want you guys to turn over to the book of Psalms. I'm going to do a little introduction there. This is my foundation of scripture for this because it's so important to know and understand, people. I will be speaking on that steadfast spirit. Amen. 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 Psalms 51, starting in verse 1, it says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. He says, Blot out my transgressions. Wash me truly from my, from my iniquities, from my yesterdays, and cleanse me from my sin. Amen. See, because King David got caught up. He messed up. He committed sin. Deep sin. And this was a man that used to chase after God's own heart. And he went chasing after women. Amen. He saw a beautiful woman that was bathing and she was naked. And that's all it took for the man that was anointed from God to look the other way from God. Amen. I'm telling you what, people. It doesn't take long for your flesh to get involved. It doesn't take long for your flesh to get riled up, people. Listen, we're, we're going to have to hold on. We're going to have to hold on to the promises of God. Because you know why? Because we're all flesh. We're all carnal. Men and women do look. But that doesn't mean, you know what? You can look at the menu all you want. Just make sure that you know what you're going to order. <laughs> oh, you'll get that on the way home. Amen. Thank you, Father. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness. According to the multitude of your tender mercies. He says, blood out my transgression. Wash me truly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Amen. Amen. Then in verse 7, I, I'm going down really quick here because I want to share more things with you guys this morning. He says, purge me with high self and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness that the bones that you have broken may rejoice. Yeah. How many people have ever had a broken spirit? Mm -hmm. Amen. Oh, yeah. How many people, yeah, I can always say this too, how many people have ever committed a sin in their life? Oh, yeah. Come on, people. Yes. Yeah. Everybody in here has committed sin. Yes. Before Christ and even after Christ. Yeah. So yeah. don't act like you're all holy. That's don't right. act like you're walking on water. On. Amen. Because we all sin. Through our eyes and ears, the things that we see and hear, the things that we speak, our, 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 our conduct alone is, is bad enough. Our attitudes, the thoughts that run through our minds, the intents of your thoughts are even worse than what you do, people, because you're already meditating in it. It's like having, it's like having something in the crock pot, waiting for it to, to boil and cure and and get it ready at the end of the day so you can open it and smell that chili con carne. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. You're waiting and you're waiting. Look at people, we've all sinned and we've all come short of the glory of God. Amen. The word of God says that, 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 that our righteousness is as filthy rags, people. My God, can you imagine what God sees when he sees us? Can you imagine what God sees, what, what you're thinking? about people 
Huh? Do you know that's an ugly thought for a Christian to think that way about another brother in Christ that's filled with the Holy Spirit? I don't get this. I don't get this. I don't get this. I, I, I don't know how people, men and women of God that are filled with the Holy Spirit, can think the worst about other people Come on now, Pastor. in the body of Christ. Come on. You've got to erase those thoughts. That's not a godly thought. That's a fleshly thought. You know what that tells me? That tells me you're still going back to yesterday. That tells me that you haven't been delivered yet from your ways. From your iniquities, you're still thinking the same way you used to about people. And we're supposed to be knitted together? And you're unraveling that knitted thing and starting to unravel because of your ways? And this is what David is saying, cleanse me from my, uh, my iniquity. I don't want to do the things that I was doing yesterday, Lord. I, I want to follow you in all your ways, Lord. I want to start chasing you again. I, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. No, I want, I want, I want it. I want it, Nana. That's what my little granddaughter used to tell my wife. Every time she crystal, when she used to, Nana, Nana, I want it, I need it, Nana. And she was looking at her makeup. Nana, 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 Nana I want it. And every so often she would give her something so she could go home with it. She, and that's how we were supposed to be with God. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, Lord, I want it, Lord. Amen. I want it. I need it, Lord. I need your presence, Lord. Yeah. I need yeah. your Holy Spirit in me. Yeah. Protect yeah. me, guide me, lead me, and direct me. I'm putting my trust in you, Lord. I don't want to mess up no more. I messed up too many times before I came to Christ. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to mess up now that I'm in Christ. Oh, my God, people. When and where and how do we get right with God? When? When? This is why I'm saying what I'm saying here today. We need to remain steadfast, unmovable, firm, persistent, determined that we're going to follow through with endurance, people. Lo que pase. Should I speak in Spanish too? Yes. How many Spanish-speaking people do we have in here? Mira, I told you that Jesus, I told you that God was Mexican. <laughs> Come on. We're all going to Cholo's house. We're going to go see Lydia Perez. It's in the Bible. It is. He's coming down with his Chicano glory. We're all Chicanos, Jim. You're Mexican, Jim. You don't even know. Don't you know that we're all going to be Mexicans when we get to heaven? That's right. And his name is Jesus. <laughs> I'm telling you people, that's why we have to remain steadfast. We have to be on. Don't let nobody move you from your faith. I don't care what happens. I don't care if it's your ex-husband, your, 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 whatever you want to call him. Amen. Amen. And whatever you do, people, don't procrastinate. Mm. My God, man, you're going to a cross. Ah, man, if you go starting to procrastinate, you're putting yourself in neutral. Woo. You're putting yourself in pause. Wow. You ain't going nowhere. Right. I don't know about you, but I want to go somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And I don't want to go back there either again. Right. Right. Amen. Yeah. No. So here we have David crying out to God, crying out to God. He wants that steadfast spirit. Amen. He has a broken spirit, but he also has a willing spirit. Yeah. And he's willing, he, listen to me, you guys, he's willing to humble himself. You know what it takes to humble yourself before the Lord and says, Lord, 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 I'm sorry, Lord, I messed up, man. I'm, 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 I took a drink, Lord. I, I, I couldn't help it, Lord. I needed that drink. I needed that joint. I needed to get high <laughs> one more time. Why don't you get high with God? Amen. Amen. Look, I've been there. We've all been there. Look at all the marijuanos that are in here. <laughs> huh? All the marijuanos that used to be marijuanos. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Come on, we've all been there. Don't laugh, Lion. You remember the last time you rolled that joint? Huh? I'll tie it and tie it. Man, I'll break it. Oh my God. 
God, people, don't ask, don't ask what you haven't been there. Because you have been there and I've been there, but I don't want to go there no more. Amen. Man, I want to stay where Amen. God has brought me to. Amen. Man, I know about my yesterdays. You know what? The other day I was examining my own personal life of where I was before I came to Christ and everything that I was going through. We were always, we we're always living from paycheck to paycheck to paycheck. I remember me and my wife when we first got married, it was hard for us. It was hard. We used to collect Coke bottles, the big ones where they used to give you 25 cents for the glass Coke bottles and we would get enough money just to buy pampers for Amen. Jacob's dad. I remember that. But and now I got an office full of pampers. Look <laughs> <laughs> what the Lord has done. Does anybody need pampers? <laughs> no, I'm serious. Does anybody need pampers? I got boxes in there. Amen. Seriously, people. I know what it's like. I used to go to HFC. I used to go to Edna Financial. I used to go to every financial institute just to borrow some money just to get me over the hump. Just to get me over the hump. And now I'm riding on the hump. Look what the Lord has done. How he has turned everything around. He can turn your issues around. But you have to remain right here, people. For those people that have never been through struggles in life, financial struggles, getting evicted, getting your cars repossessed. Man, I've been through all that. Huh, Marshawn? We've been through all this. Amen. That's our testimony. That was before Christ. But after Christ, oh my God, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. God. God has been good. Yes. Yes. God has been good. Yes. I'm telling you, God is good. This is why, man, when I tell you what, when this word, when this word, when this word came into my heart, into my life, into our lives, into our marriage, into our home, man, God started shifting and changing things little by little by little by little. I think you know that God can do something like this. Yes, yes, yes. If he wants oh, yeah. to, but he chooses not to because he's testing you to oh, see yeah. if you're going to remain faithful. That's are right. you going to remain steadfast in the things of God? Yeah. No, are you? That's Nobody right. can tell you that but you. Okay. You know that you have a choice to do what you want in life. Right. Huh? You can go back to your drinking parties. You can go back to womanizing. You can go back out there looking for that big hunk. Huh? There's a lot of women in here that are looking for a bow and start acting like Ruth and you'll get one. Say that. I'm only telling you what the Word of God says. Yeah, you can kill me, but you ain't going to kill this message. Because the Word of the Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. 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 I'm telling you the truth, people. I'm trying to help some people in here. Man, God has been helping us so long. Oh, my God. I thank God for what He has done in our lives. Seriously. Seriously. I'm telling you, people, if you get on board with God, if you get on board with God, don't limit don't limit the hand of God. Amen. He's got a big hand. Yes. Yes. That's why that song goes, I got the whole world in my hand. Amen. I got my brothers and my sisters. Mm -hmm. oh, I don't want to start singing. You guys don't want to throw me out of the church. You can't. I'm the pastor. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. He says, make me hear joy and gladness. God, people, make me, it says, make me, make me, make me, force me, Lord, to hear the gladness oh my God. that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, oh, yes, and yes. renew a steadfast spirit yes, within yes, me. Yes, Lord. Yes, create. Lord. Come on. You know that God can create that if yes. you choose to? Yes. Huh? If you want to walk and run away from God, then guess what? Go ahead. Walk away from God. I'm going to see how far you can get. That's right. You ain't going to get too far, people. Amen? Amen? Amen. Thank you, Father. He says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. He says, And do not cast away. Do not cast me away from your presence. And do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Oh my God, I, when I read that, I started remembering what happened to the first king that ever got anointed from God. 
And it was Saul. And the first commandment that God gave Saul, what did he tell him to do? Go and kill all the Amalekites. Go and kill all. Right. Fathers and mothers, sons and daughters. And don't bring nothing back. Why? Because why? Because why? Come on, you guys should know that answer right now. Somebody give me an answer. With unclean. It was an unclean thing, people. But Saul was doing what? He became disobedient to God, people. And God saw it, and God heard it, and God took care of business like this, you know. The word of God, the, the word of God says that the Holy Spirit was taken away from him, and a distressing spirit fell in place, and this man was distressed the rest of his life, people, and nobody could soothe him. But King David, when he used to play his harp, Come on. So the next time you're feeling down and out, turn on some worship music. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Turn on some praise music. Yeah. yeah. Turn yourself on to God and see what happens, yeah. people. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Too many people are leaning upon themselves and thinking that they can do it with and without God. Not locos. We're Christians. We're Cristianos now. We're Christians. We can't live life without God no more. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You have surrendered your life to God. You said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Till somebody else comes along. Uh oh. And he says, yes, Lord. Can you hold on? I got to take care of business. I got to do this. I got to do that. And God knows. He's going to let you act like an idiot if you want. I'm only telling you truth, people. Amen. 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 He says, do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. I don't know what that feels like, people. I've never backslidden. I fear God. I know who this God is. I know what God is about. Yeah, I messed up before I came to Christ, but ever since I came to Christ, I have never gone back to my iniquities. Amen. Or my wife. Amen. We have served the Lord as best as we could. We stepped out in faith. We have been faithful to the word of God. And now even more so, we're so accountable even more now. More now, more than ever, we're so accountable to his word. That's why the word tells us in the book of Psalms 119, 11, your word I have hidden in my heart that I will not sin. So when sin appears, we got to remind sin. The word said, just like Jesus told Satan, Amen. When he was being tempted. Yes. If you are the son of God, why don't you command these stones to be turned into bread? Hmm. And Jesus gave him an answer. See, that's the answer that we're supposed yeah. to give when right. temptation right. when temptation comes your that's way. Right. And when temptation is trying to pull you into sin, you've got to remind yourself and say, and the word of the Lord said, Amen. that's for you. You have to fight those battles sometimes. You have to be an overcomer. You have to be steadfast. You have to determine within your mind and within your heart that you're not going to sin. Because sin is sin, people. I don't care what you call it. You can call it anything. Anything that displeases God is sin. Amen? Anything that displeases God is sin. And you're going to have to remind yourself of this great God that we're serving. Amen? Like I said, because tomorrow is not promised to nobody. Amen? Amen. 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 Amen? And in verse 12 it says, Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach, he says, transgressors your ways, and sinners shall be converted to you. Why would he teach somebody? Because he made a mistake, and he knew what the mistake was going to cost him. If you knew about somebody that was headed down Sin Valley, would you try to stop them? Let me tell you, don't go there. Don't do that. Don't touch that. Don't see this. You know, too many people are tampering and, and trying to do this, this, and it's okay. It's okay. It's Hollywood. It's only a knack. It's only a movie. Heck, no, it's no movie. Those things are being embedded in your mind. Seriously, people, look at all of Hollywood, how bad they're talking about the president. Yeah. All of Hollywood. Yeah. I'll never see another De Niro movie. It's like I told you before, they just want to take your De Niro. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go and see something stupid? You want to go see a rated R movie? Go ahead. 
God's not going to stop you. I already told you, the R doesn't stand for righteousness. <laughs> but you want to go and dab because what? Because it's who? Whoever your favorite star is? Man, last night we were looking for a movie on Netflix, and we started, going, well, we can't watch that one, babe. Oh, we can't watch that one, babe. We can't watch that one. Yeah. Oh, we finally had to find something that was at least, at least, even PG-13 movies are ugly now. Yeah, yeah. So what do we watch? Oh, man, if, 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 oh, my God, people. Fear flicks. Fear flicks. Thank you, Father. White fan. What? White thing. Hey, I'm doing the teaching over here, you guys. Over here. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. It's not that yesterday you could have talked. Hey, man, Brother Joe already gave us a word yesterday. And that was a good teaching, Brother Joe, about being a leader and knowing how to lead and remain a leader within your home and even in the church and the ministry. Hey, Amen. I didn't forget the teaching, Brother Joe. Hey, Amen. So, whatever you do, people, don't throw in the towel. Hey, Amen. And don't give up. No, don't give up. Amen. You have to continue to have that willing spirit. Amen. You have to continue to pray that God will strengthen you in that area. Because we're supposed to have that steadfast spirit. Amen. 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 Let me give you a couple of, uh, of verses here. In Hebrews 10, 36, it says this, look. For you have need of endurance. No, you have need of endurance. So that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. There's a promise that we're going to receive, people, if we continue to endure, even through the hard times and good times. It's real easy, people. It's real easy to endure while you're going, when, when, when everything is paid, when you got some money in the bank. That's right. Yeah. And you got some money to spend. Amen? But what happens when all hell breaks loose and the enemy hits your finances? Huh? Are you going to still be able to come and say, Lord, uh, here's my tithe and here's my offering Lord you come first because the Lord says that we were holy people right a holy nation a royal priesthood and the word of God tells me that the tithe is holy so holy people should be bringing in the holy tithe Amen Amen, Amen. You're right. Amen. Amen. You gotta have a steadfast spirit in that too yeah. Amen because I'll tell you this I, I've told you before I never used to tithe before because I was a hoarder. <laughs> I used to like to keep my money in my pocket. <laughs> Amen. Uh, when, when the offering bucket came around, man, uh, I, I would look in my front pocket uh -huh. to see how much I had. <laughs> but then God dealt with me. And then God showed up. Right. And then God showed off. <laughs> and then he says, look, see, I told you all these years I've been trying to tell you this. And the word says, my word told you. And, and see, whether you believe in tithing or not, that's up to you. All I got to do is tell you what the Word of God says. Whether you believe it or not, that's up to you. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 So let me read verse uh, Hebrews 10, 36 again. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive what? The promises. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 Turn over to the book of Romans, chapter 8. Oh, no, Pastor Bob is going to Romans. He's going to crucify us. Oh. Amen. But let me tell you about what happens when you learn how to do, endure people. How do you how to learn to persevere and how to remain steadfast. And no matter what happens in life. Because I can tell you something. There's, been, there's probably people in here that have been to hell and back. Seriously, you have. Whether it be mentally, physically, financially, spiritually. You have been through something. Did you give up on God? No. I know that I didn't. Because we've been through some stuff, people. Our cars have been repossessed. We've been evicted. Before, Betty, don't look like, don't look at me like that. <laughs> Seriously, we have been through some stuff, people. We were this close. We were four hours away from losing our home. And God showed up. God showed up. Thank you, Lord. They went and they repossessed my wife's car while she was at work. A week later, I was driving in a brand new Silverado. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. True story. 
Not even know, but I, we prayed and believed. And I told my wife, look, that's the kind of truck I wanted in that same color. A week later, I had it. Amen. But that's God. Yes. Amen. But that's where I put my faith in. Right. And, and God came through. Yeah, you have no clue how many times God has been through for us. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Father. Let me tell you what Paul is saying here, okay? In chapter uh, Romans 8, 31, it says, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. No, who? It doesn't matter who they are. Amen. You know? People don't bother me. I don't care how much spiritual clout they got. I don't care how much spiritual clout they got. I don't care who they are, what they are. I don't care what platform they stand on. Right. Nobody moves me Amen. like God moves me. Yes. You know why? Because they're just like flesh and blood, just like right. me. Amen? 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 Amen. 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 What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Mm. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Has anybody ever blamed you for something? Mm. <laughs> Raise your hand, babe. Come on. Pick up your feet, <laughs> count your toes, count your fingers. Right. You know how many times we have been blamed, right. huh, for speaking the truth in love, huh? Do you know how many times people have been in this place and have walked away? I'm not ashamed to say that. Like Mr. Key said, I feel sorry for that fool. I pity the fool who comes against me. I pity that fool who comes against me. No, I'm saying that. I pity that fool who comes against me. And this church and this ministry and me and my wife. I pity that fool. Because that's what they are. They're fools. They don't seem to realize who they're talking to. Look, we're not perfect. We're not perfect people. But we speak the truth in love. And sometimes the truth hurts. And I hope it hurts you deep. Amen. Because that's what you need to hear. The truth needs to go so deep in you to start pulling all those lies out of you. Right. Yes. Amen? Yes. So I pity that fool. Yeah, I'm calling a fool just like David did. Amen? Amen? He said, who did not spare his own son but delivered him up for us all. How shall then not him, how should he not him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Yes. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died. And furthermore, and furthermore, and, fur and, and let me tell you, that's what he's trying to tell them. Come on, open up your ears. And he says, and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Then who shall separate us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sore? For it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. But I love what Paul says here to the church. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Tell somebody, I am a conqueror. And I am going to conquer sin. Amen? I love verse 38, people, for I am persuaded. In other words, people, I am convinced and I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height or death, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, Amen. which is in Christ Jesus, Amen. our Lord. Amen. There's nothing that should separate you from this word and the love of Jesus Christ. It's because of him that we're here today. And one day we're going to see him face to face. And this is why I'm sharing this with all of you, that we have to remain steadfast, that no matter what happens in life, you're not going to be moved by nobody. Their emotions. 
their, their worries or their anxieties or whatever it is, whatever it is, people. Look, if people come to you for anything, you know what? Listen to me, you guys. Take them to the Word. This is what God is saying about your situation and your issue. Let's go, look, let's go deep into His Word to see where we're at. Let's see where he wants to take you to. Because, see, a lot of people are just playing church nowadays. A lot of people just come to church when they feel like it. Mm -hmm. Because they want to feel good that they went to church. It's not about your feelings and your emotions anymore, people. It's about coming to church to come together to praise him, to worship him, to unite together and get knitted together. Amen? And those are the things that we have to continue to do, people. And if we allow ourselves to get separated from this word and his love and everything that he gave up for us, man, when was the last time you gave up something for somebody? Come on. Huh? Boy, sure is quiet in here. <laughs> I hope something, I hope, I hope your heart is being stirred up right now. Come on. Seriously, people, people, for the last three or four weeks, God has been dealing with me, too. Amen. And there's some things that I have to correct in my life. Yes. I want to get better at what I'm doing. That's right. Amen. Amen. I, don't, I, don't, I don't want anything to tempt me to yes. break away from the love of God. Come on. Okay, let, let me tell you this, okay? If you love somebody or you're in love with somebody, are you going to hurt that person? Then why is it that sometimes Christians, born again, yes, born again Christians, choose to do something to hurt God? You know what? That you're not hurting nobody but yourself. Huh? Look, we have to be careful what we're saying and doing. We have to be careful what we're talking about and who we're talking about. You think that God doesn't hear and know the intents of your heart also? Huh? Oh, my God, people. We, 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 that's why David was saying, look, oh, thank you, Lord. That's why David was saying this, create in me a clean heart. Because that's where all the issues of life are at. It starts right here, people. If you're thinking the worst of all people, and that's your brother and your sister, that's your husband, that's your wife, your daughter, your familia, yeah, your in-laws. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know my suegra, Pastor Bob. <laughs> well, thank God that I don't know her. <laughs> but you do. And you may be the one that needs to pray for her. Right. Pray for your suegros. Right. Amen. Pray for your own brothers and sisters. Yeah. I'm talking about bloodline here. Come on. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Because they're not all saved. They're still out in the world. But they're looking at you to see how you're going to conduct yourself. Are you still acting stupid? Because stupid does and stupid knows. Do you know how to act stupid? Yeah, you do. Because sometimes you do it. Sometimes you get caught up in the, in the dumb things that they're saying. The Lord says to be separate. Amen? That doesn't mean that you have to go out of this world. But you don't have to conform to the things that they're saying and doing. Amen. I'm telling you, yeah, it's okay to have fun here and there and joke around. But there's a limit to everything, people. And you better start setting limitations on yourself. You know what to say. And you sure know how to say it. Amen? You don't have to go around having to blend in with them just so you can be part of them. Amen? You have to blend out, people. Let them see the light that is in you. Amen. Let them see the love of Christ that is in you. Who cares if they persecute you? All the cussing and the cursing that's going on, all the drinking and all the partying and doing this, this, and that, and you're in the mix, but you know what? you got to be that light. You've got to be that light. Don't be afraid to tell them about Jesus Christ. Don't, you know, man, a lot of Christians are going around with a lot of dimmers. <laughs> because that dimmer, man, they can bring your light down, or you can choose to 
Brighten that up all the way. All for God. <laughs> right, Brother Jeff? <laughs> Let your light shine, people. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So don't let nothing or anyone bring division into your life, people. You're going to have to continue. Listen to me. Hold on. Jesus says, hold on. I'm a coming. He's coming, people, and there's going to be a day of judgment. Right. My God, he's going to open up the book. He's going to read everything about us. Well, didn't you accept me on that day? Didn't you say, yes, Lord? Didn't you say that you surrender? Didn't you say you wanted to create a new heart in me? You said all these things, but why are you going back to all this? Why do people do that? I'm going to tell you why, because you haven't been delivered. Mm -hmm. Come on from the things that you need to be delivered from. Right. Too many people are still holding on to yesterday. You gotta let it go, people. You gotta let it go. That's right. Tell somebody, hold on. Hold on. I'm a coming. He's coming back, people. He's coming back for his people. Too many people are playing games. Amen? God's name is not homie. He don't play games. Amen. 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 I do going to ban. I tell you what, I haven't even been able to get into the meat of this message. Oh but I know that I've been giving you enough to learn to live by. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Lord. So I'm trying to I'll teach you so you can start learning something new. It's not that hard, people, to serve God. No, it's not that hard to serve the Lord, people. Amen. Amen. You have to remain that with that steadfast spirit, people. Right. Amen. I don't know about you, but all I know that I want God in my life. Yeah. Amen. No, I want the Lord in my life. Yeah. I want to continue to walk with Him all the days of my life. Amen. Yeah. Man, I want I I, I I want God to give me the best. I want to rest in Him. Every day of my life, man, I want I, I, I want our marriage to get better than whatever that has ever been. Seriously, people, there's too many Christians that are getting divorced. Too many people that are not willing to remember their vows that they said to each other whenever you said it. Yeah, oh yeah, I love you, I love you, I love you. Yeah, till the party's over. Huh? Till everything goes south. Huh? Like I told you guys, Oh, I better not go there. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But I want to thank you guys before we end the service, uh, before we pray and everything, I want to bring up Sister Debbie. She's got an announcement to make. Amen. I told you guys that we were going to be doing something. And uh, 